Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I just want you to know, check out our merchandise store. You can support our show, go there, purchase some of the products and everything else. Shirts, other things we're gonna be adding that helps support our show and allows us to keep going and give you what you want. You can check us out on all the social media platforms, Facebook, iTunes, TikTok. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. Make a comment about maybe some guests you'd like to see us have on in the future. Once again, thank you for watching. Good evening, everybody. It's Mario with Motorcycle Knuckle Busters, and we're back at it again. we got another great guest for you. I uh, want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, for those of you going to Biketoberfest, we are going to be out there. We're going to have some pretty cool announcements uh, where to check us out. Um, we're going to be with Billy Lane out there covering the Sons of Speed races and a few other things. So if you're there, look me up. Uh, we're going to have some cool stuff, to, uh, giveaways, things like that, and we're going to have some great opportunities for you to, to win some awesome gear. Uh, our guest tonight, really, uh, for those of you, if you don't know who he is, then it just means you haven't been around the motorcycle world or television or, you know, uh, pop culture at all. Uh, I think this gentleman has really defined um, the art of building motorcycles. And this is a gentleman who, you know, through his, his family and different things has, you know, shown um, the ups and downs of the world, the stress that building most motorcycles and, and the, the demand that, that you can be under trying to do things like this. But he's always been true to himself, and I respect that so much. But so without further ado, I want to introduce Paul Tuttle Sr. Hey, how you guys doing? We're doing good, Paul. So. Good. Um, it looks like you're in studio, I mean, in the shop there. So that's, uh, I see we got a couple of things up on the rack, huh? Yeah, I just was working on this old shovel head here. Uh, it, was, it was giving me a little how to change the main seal, uh, main uh, seal. And um, first of all, it took a little uh, time to get it. But uh, that it has a Primo uh, primary on there. And sometimes they're difficult because it's hooked to the, 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 the transmission slides with the plate and it's hard to get the belt. I, I tried to get the belt back on without disassembling all that stuff. So, but I haven't wind up doing it anyhow. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one thing about working on bikes is sometimes what you hope is going to be an easy thing to fix can be uh, most of the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Paul, I, I kind of want, you know, we, we like to delve in a little and talk to folks and, and learn a little bit more about them now. You were, um, you know, obviously you're still in New York, but you were, um, you were born in Yonkers and you were mm -hmm. raised in, in Pearl River. Is that correct? Yeah, I went to school in Pearl River. I graduated from uh, Pearl River, yes. Okay. So um, in the, those early years, you know, and for people that don't know, you know, we're talking the New York City area. I mean, especially Yonkers and stuff, but, um, you know, what... Did, did you run into motorcycle influences as a child that you know brought you to this point, or when did that kind of occur for you? No, not really, not really. I think that I probably got my interest uh, in motorcycles in probably the later part of the '60s. Okay. All right, and then now um, talking about the '60s and stuff. Now you were a merchant marine during the v Vietnam War, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. I was um, I was 18, and I joined uh, the merchant marines, and uh, we wound up taking what we did was we took ammunition to Vietnam. Okay, and so kind of you know I know what a merchant marine is, but for people that don't realize what a merchant marine is, because I don't think a lot of people truly understand that. So explain to them what you know what that that role means what that designation means well um during world war ii uh the merchant marines used to take uh you know whether it be food or um ammo or whatever it would be, they would take it across and uh and deliver it but i think that uh, one of the things that uh if you were a merchant marine and you were on a merchant marine ship you 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 weren't allowed to carry ammo you didn't carry anything to defend yourself so basically you were on your own right right and and i mean and there was a lot of merchant marines obviously that lost their lives in world war ii because of u-boats yeah. and things like that and you know so 
Uh, I don't think people realize, you know, that that's a special dedication and that's serving our nation, you know, just as much as, you know, the armed services, the other ones that we recognize. So really uh, thank you for your, you know, that service and, and what you did for our country. Thanks. So I want to fast forward a little. I mean, you know, so then um, after Merch Marines, you ended up doing uh, Orange County Ironworks. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I did a, a few odd jobs in between. I was a carpenter for a little while, but uh, but pretty much I, I, I um, and I think it was, I don't know, like 69, somewhere around there, uh, I was working in, in some iron shops and I decided that, uh, you know, that, that I wanted to go on my own. I didn't really want to work for people. And I bought a uh, four cylinder Hobart welder and I bought off my dad, I think it was a 69 International. And I just went and, you know, I was welding car exhaust and I would weld stuff on farms uh, until, you know, eventually uh, I got a little shop and I started doing ornamental work, uh, pretty much just ornamental work. And, you know, gradually, gradually, you know, I got bigger shops and, you know, and I was doing structural steel and, and ornamental. So uh, I did that probably for probably close to 30 years and i really loved it yeah i, I mean uh some of the shops and especially in that area what I, they've been turning out for centuries i mean ironworks in the new york city area and the east coast is is legendary you know uh going up into new england whatnot so being part of that culture is really you know that's pretty fascinating now if somebody if somebody was to go to uh, come to New York City or something like that, is there anywhere where they could see some of the iron work you've worked on, you know, some of that ornamental work? I mean, I've done ornamental work everywhere, you know, I've done it in New York City, I've done it uh, I mean, if they wanted to come see me, I can give them a thousand addresses and they can go, <laughs> uh, check it out. Yeah. We 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 did quite a bit of work. Um, we did uh, in the beginning we did a lot of residential and then we got into commercial in the early 80s. And, uh, you know, then we just, at the end, we were doing, actually, at the end, my son, Dan, took over the business. And uh, he made the, the business now is like, like 100 times what it was. Wow. Yeah, he, he does all the high rises in New York City. Yeah, he, had, he, he really, he brought it to a way to higher level. Yeah, and I, I know once you got into the motorcycles, you turned the business over to Dan, and yeah. you know that that's great that it's a family legacy, and you know. And now, do you get it? Do you go over there, check things out, um, play around a little with the welders? He comes over to me and checks things out. <laughs> well, I can't blame him for that. I, I do go over there time to time because he has state of the art stuff. You know, he has uh, beam liners and. Uh, everything's kind of automated, so it's like it's amazing uh, to, to, to see the new technology they have opposed to what I was doing in the business. Yeah, it just goes to show you that in every field, you know, technology is advancing and it's changing the way we all do. We all do business. So, so then in 1999, um, I believe that's when you when you decided to start building bikes. Um, is that correct? In, I'm sorry. I, I'm in 99, did you start building bikes then? No, I built. I was building bikes in the 60s. Okay, but uh, you that, started uh, building them as a business in 99. Uh, as a business, well, I still had the, the iron shop, and then I, and I always was building motorcycles, and I was always, you know, I always had the the availability, uh, even in the, the late 60s. Uh, you know, a lot of most people didn't have welders and grinders. And so I always had an advantage uh, building motorcycles, but the steel business kept me busy. Uh, so it was more or less a hobby. But sure. in yeah, 1999, I opened up uh, the bottom half of my shop, which was a, which was like a big garage. And, you know, that's when I said, you know, maybe I'll do maybe 10 bikes a year or something like that. Get get a dealership or, you know, I, I, I didn't really want to go big because I just more or less, it was a passion that I enjoyed doing. So in 66, when you were, I mean, six, in the sixties, when you were building, I mean, then, I mean, you would have been able to find, you know, being a knucklehead or whatnot. I mean, all kinds of different things and, you know, they weren't getting all snatched up. So what was it that you would go look for? What kind of motors did you like to build around? I like the shovel heads. I still have, 
that's a shovel head on the lift there. And uh, I'm actually going to be building a pan for a customer um, pretty shortly. Uh, but I've had knuckles. I've had pans. I've had flatheads. Uh, I, I, I tell you, I'm a shovel head guy. Okay. Yeah, I, I like I like shovels and I like pan heads. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's those always attract my attention when I'm at a show or somebody yeah. comes riding in or something like that, you know. It's just a, a beautiful, beautiful engine to build around and uh, and whatnot. So I still I still have uh, in 1974 I, I bought my first um, Harley Super Glide. Yeah, and and I still have it today. Do you really? Yeah, I paid twenty twenty four hundred dollars for a brand new. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, yeah, and, amazing. And, and you know, look at what the top of the line Harleys are selling for now. You know, to buy one new mm -hmm. off the showroom. So wow. big, big difference. So um, once you got, you know, you're, here you are, you're going along and you're building bikes. How did, how did you get started? How were how you found or they found, you know, find you or you found them to start doing the show? They found me. Um, of course, Je you know, Jesse James. Yes. Who's the pioneer of that. But he, he did the first show on the west coast and uh, it was very successful he did a, a couple so shows actually but it was very successful and i guess they decided that they wanted to do a show find a builder on the east coast and at that time it was uh i had just kind of officially opened up motorcycle shop down from my shop and just got a website right around that time and they said uh go find somebody find me somebody on the east coast and let's do a show with them and uh i guess they were going through the sites and they they just saw a picture of me and they said um this guy looks like a motorcycle guy give him a call and then the right. rest is history <laughs> so you know i've talked to a few of the guys like Gavin, different people like that have worked for you in the past and you know you know it's really i've always been impressed by um They've told me that when they came on your show, um, before they came on, the first person that reached out to him was you. You called him up. And he said, you know, I get a message and they say, it's Paul Sr. Hey, I want to talk to you about stuff. And they thought it was a bunch of, they thought it was a bunch of BS and somebody was jacking with them. And they said, and lo and behold, I come find out it's actually Paul. He's actually the guy that's reaching out to me. And I, I think that's a, a, a hell of a testament to you because you didn't leave it up to somebody else. You, it sounds like, you know, you, you recognize the talent, the different people out there, but you personally called, you didn't leave that somebody else. I think that's pretty awesome. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, I think there's so much talent out there that's unrecognized. It, it's just f far beyond. It's it, it, it's when you like I I do I just do Instagram because all the all the car people and the bike people, but some of the stuff that they do is just and you know what no, nobody knows who they are with it. You know, it, it, it's I think they deserve they definitely deserve a shot at it. Yeah, and I and I think you've given some great talent. Um, you've given them the exposure so they could advance their careers. And now it's kind of like you're like one of the great NFL coaches, as far as I see, because you see they talk about the coaching tree and how that develops. And now I see that you've taken people, they've branched out from you, they're doing their thing, and now they're doing the same thing. I mean, so you've kind of set a standard for – being the steward of of our industry recognizing talent giving it an opportunity to flourish and and thrive and uh, i think that's i think that's a hell of a testament to you thank you so of of all those guys you know i mean you did the show i mean you did over 200 episodes i mean that's a lot of filming that's a lot of work <laughs> um i've heard some different stories of things going on like jet bike and stuff like that tell me some of the stories some of the things that stand out in your mind as some of those builds oh my god uh you know i could just tell you right from the beginning when we did the first show the jet bike um and billy lane had a show yeah uh, roger borgett yep uh some ladies had a that had a bike shop did the show I did a show that, that night and and us and uh i remember watching 
<laughs> I remember watching that show, and uh, I, I think they put us on last. They saved the best to, for last. <laughs> there you go. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I watched those shows, and they were very professional. And, um, you know, bike building and, and whatnot, and then they put our show on. And I thought it would be along the same lines as um, as those guys show. And uh, and if you watch the first show, it was like the they had the most dysfunctional family on 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 all of, of, of TV. And um, so I was kind of like like I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe that they would show, you know, it was like, you don't, it's the first time you're on camera. You don't, you never ever think you're going to be on camera. You never think you're ever going to be, you know, that stuff's fairy tales. And um, so, you know, we, we were going at it a lot. And, and, and listen, for me, uh, even though the camera's there, when I get pissed off or when I, there's something I don't care about, I don't really care about the cameras and I don't really care what I say. And that's basically what happened, but they filmed it all and they showed all of that. And I think that, um, I remember what I remember is that I had ju just started, uh, opening up a shop at that time. And I remember saying, they showed that on TV, the, the, like I'm ruined, you know, who would buy a bike from a, somebody that's like as dysfunctional or as big of a maniac as me. So I, I just thought it was all over at that point. And, uh, and what I started getting uh, emails during the day after the show. And I don't, I don't think I ever got an email. <laughs> I don't think I ever got an email before, you know, and I, I, I still have my steel shop and I, my secretary called me and says, you're, you have emails, you know, I said, all right. And so I said, um, how many emails? And she said, they, they're not, they're nonstop. They're, they're just hundreds and hundreds. So evidently people like the show. Um, and I guess, I, there were, I think there was a lot of identification, especially families with the show. And I think that's that's what brought them into the show more so than even the bikes. Absolutely. That when you when you watch that, it had a it had an ending and it had a, a, a result of something. So, you know, at the end of the show, there was a, a piece of art, a bike being built and people people would 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 uh, they would watch the show for the drama but they'd always want to see the bike at the end of the show so I think that uh, that kept uh, a lot of uh, people's interest but what I found was most interesting is that <clears throat> excuse me that the next day when I remember going to the gym and being depressed, and uh, somebody told me that uh, they said, yeah, you your show was the highest your show was the highest rated show on cable TV, period. <laughs> I was wow. like, how did, how did uh, you know, how, how could that be? But but, you know, that that that's that was the beginning. You know, that was the beginning. And it just it it, it was an overnight success. It was, it was very overwhelming. I'm sure it was because, you know, nobody's prepared for, you know, your life doing a 180 and especially when it comes to fame so speaking of that i mean one thing i'm kind of curious tell me you know for you what what has been the pros of fame you know when when that fame came to you you know what was the positives well you know looking back you're you're so caught up and you're so uh there's so many things going on in your and your in your mind and you're trying to uh put stuff together so you know there's so many things that go through your mind you know and 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 you know you're making money and uh you have crazy fame and people are you know they're flocking all over there you know we've had lines I'm, I'm not kidding we we did a we did a show at the javik center and there was a line around the building and, and traffic was actually backed up that's how crazy it was you know but uh, but i think as as things went along and you start start to um get a grasp on what's going on 
uh, I think what you what you realize is the effect you have on people sure. and how you can make a difference in their lives. And I think that's the, the uh, biggest blessing that you can have. No, I, I, I really appreciate hearing you say that. I mean, I know uh, you came out to uh, last year you were out with Oscar Mike here in northern Illinois. And um, I ran into some guys just the other day where some on some bikes, they ran uh, security and stuff. And they talked about meeting you. And, uh, you know, they they just uh, they said you're just such a genuine person. And uh, I got a lot of I got a lot of respect for that. And, uh, you know, the fact that you use your use your platform to be able to make a difference in lives. That's awesome. Now, you know, the other thing, you know, I can't ask the positive with, without asking, you know, what's been the cons, what's been the negatives of, of that fame? I think people hounding you all the time, you know, um, I hate people that solicit me, you know, right. especially, you know, I do a lot of autographs. I do a lot of signing. I do, uh, pictures and I don't, I don't, I don't mind that you get tired. But when people come up to you and they want to sell you this and it's like, bro, I'm here for the people, you know, I'm not here to entertain whatever it is that you're trying to sell me, you know, and, and 90 percent, I'm not rude. But there's something about that. This bugs me. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. We run into that a little and certainly not to your level. But, you know, you see people, they think you have a platform and maybe they could advance themselves on your back, you know, and that's. You're not here to carry the world. You're just trying to carry yourself and maintain a, yeah, a respectable and people, level. And people tend to take advantage of, advantage of you also. And even people that you would never expect, uh, they, it's disappointing um, when you see how people go from your friend uh, to be... To, to um, I'm trying to think of the word, self-serving. Sure. And, uh, you trust these people, and um, it's disappointing. I think it's not just trust. It's a matter of you know, you just you don't expect them to turn, that and too. and and treat you in a way that's much different than what your friendship is defined by, and that's hard. That's very hard. And I I can see where that would have been a challenge for you, and especially with as quickly as the fame came for you with the show and the notoriety of everything, you know, um, that time was crazy. I mean, uh, there was all kinds of shows that were going on, you know, uh, there was the bike build offs that came along. There are other things coming on. You see, you know, guys like counting cars, you know, they're doing cars and bikes. You got the car shows, but it was really bikes that made all that take off. And it was you and, and Jesse, you know, if, uh, you guys really lit the fire for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I think that um yeah, we did. And I and I, and I and I uh I think that um I think our shows were as real as could be. And I think that the shows that started branching off from that um it started getting it started to get scripted. And you could you could pretty pretty much tell i mean i can tell uh if a show's scripted or not but you know like every show they had a father with the cutoff sleeves and they had a son that they were yelling at so it yeah. was i mean in a sense it was flattering you know what i mean because, sure you know but but i don't think that i think like you, you, you said uh jesse and i were really the pioneers and yeah, and it's, you know, you talk about scripted. I mean, personally, you know, we don't script nothing with what we do here because just as I told you before we came on, this is raw and real. That's the way bikers are. That's the way we want to see it. We don't want to see something that's overproduced. Just be genuine to yourself. And, uh, and that's, that's what you've always been. So I love that fact. So you've built literally, you know, hundreds and hundreds of bikes. Um, tell me <laughs> thousands. Okay. So tell me, um, tell me about, you know, some of the builds. I mean, I mean, there's probably a couple of things that, uh, you know, I'm curious about, like, who's a, who is a really good person, you know, that you had a great time building a bike for, you know, and, and why tell us some stories there. Uh, Bill Murray. Okay. Bill Murray, we did a Caddyshack, um, bike, but that guy's real, you know, like he's, he, the person you see on TV, he, that, that's the same guy that you see in person or when, when, when he's around you. So he's a great guy. He was just too funny. He's always upbeat. So that was a, um, 
you know, we, I don't know how to golf. We went golfing uh, with him and his brother. And uh, so that was a great time. That was a great time. I think that was, uh, you know, I always say, and when somebody says, you know, who was your favorite person? I always say Bill Murray. Yeah. So when you were out there golfing, did we do any Paul Tuttle uh, kind of lose a little on the ball or what? You know, those are good golfers, Mikey. Mikey oh, is he? Hit, yeah, he could hit the ball like two miles. <laughs> good for him. Yeah. So now that would that would have been that would have been a lot of fun. Now, how about as far as bikes themselves? Um, you've built some just legendary bikes, some very recognizable bikes to all of us. But you know, it's not what everybody else likes. What? Tell me about some of the builds that you just love doing. Well, of course, the fire, the the, the nine eleven bike. Yes. Um, the the um, POW bike. Um, I mean, I mean, the. It, there was uh, so many. I mean, those were the most heartfelt bikes. Um, we did Fallen Heroes. We did a lot of military bikes. And I think most of those bikes had a special meaning. You know, you just weren't building a bike just for the money. It was more of a heartfelt uh, build. And to me, um, those were some of the best builds. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um working with some folks now we're doing uh dogs for a brave bike right now so what are you doing for, uh dogs for a brave bike um with johnny max house of choppers we're doing we're doing a bike that we're going to sell at mecham next january so okay. we did the we did the tunnels for towers bike last year so franny drummond's going to be doing some painting on that one as a matter of fact this one coming up and franny's doing oh, a okay. helmet. franny's doing a helmet for me for uh Kirsch, uh, Kirsch, we're doing a hel uh, thing with helmets. We've got a bunch of helmets we're doing up with artists around the country, and then they're going to be auctioned off at Mecham Auctions to raise money for curing kids' cancer. So I like I like doing that stuff like you do because it's an opportunity to take what you are given. You take what you have and being able to turn it into something better, you know, and play it forward. So, and that's something you've you've done dozens, if not you know, hundreds of bikes that have had you know some meaning like that. So, really, really cool stuff. Thank so, um, shows. I mean, we did talk about the first show standing out. Um, any other shows? You know, that through the years, if you were going to tell people to watch a show because this really defines us uh, and what we were, um, what show would that be? The Christmas bike. <laughs> I, now I don't remember that one. So tell me oh, a little bit about that. that one? I don't think I did. Oh, uh, that was great. It just, it, it just was a, um, it was one of those shows that, you know, everybody, it, and there, there was no throwing sh stuff around and, and everybody was just so focused on, and the bike was, the bike was a reindeer bike. So it was like, it had the handlebars or antlers and the, the, the front fender was a, a reindeer and, you know, you had all ornamental stuff hanging from it. And then, and then the following year we, we made a sled, like a, like a regular sled that would hook to that bike. And we, we, we went, um, on Christmas, we put all gifts in there and we drove into the town with the bike, me pulling the bike and, and Mikey and Paulie in the, in the back, uh, giving out, uh, gifts, but you know, oh, like it doesn't necessarily have to be a special bike. It's a special moment. Sure. That, that you, that I look at, you know, it's, 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 and, and, you know, the, the right now it's like, I'm not, you know, I can't think enough about, the shows or whatnot, but there's times when I sit down and I'll ramble on through 50 shows. And, and it's interesting because I sit with people, they know more than I do. They watch more, more shows and when they'll mention a show that I didn't even know about, you know? So it's like interesting that how people uh, are so involved, you know? And uh, I think that the, what I hear a lot, even today, I hear a lot. Don't forget these kids are grown up now, you know? And every all, my the biggest thing they say to me is I sat down, uh, me and me and my father or my father's past or my mother's past. But some of the um, some of the best times is when we every Monday we would sit down and watch your show. We would never miss it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sitting here with my uh, technical director Bryce, and Bryce, you know, he said when we're bringing you on, he's like, you know, I used to sit with my dad and watch that show, you know, and that's to him 
you know, being able to be a part of this was really important to him because this, you're, you're part of his history, his legacy with his father and stuff. And to be able to, you know, to look back now at all these years and say, man, I've, I've done that in living rooms all across America, around the world. That's, that's pretty remarkable. And you know, the thing of it is, is that the, um, like I never really, I never really looked at it like in the sense, look what I'm doing. You know what I mean? It even took me a while to figure out why, you know, really, I, I had a hard time figuring out why these people uh, would be want to be, be want to be uh, part of what I do or who I am. Because, you know, I always looked at it as this crazy guy, you know what I mean? It's like some of the stuff that I that I did, it was like, who would want to uh, be part of that or, uh, you know, who wants to know that guy that acts like that? So it um, it really uh, it really again, you know, I think it uh, it brought f families together and had such a huge impact and effect on family and kids. Uh, when we, when we used to uh, have a sign autographs and set up at the Daytona or, or wherever. And, uh, you know, we'd start signing at seven in the morning and sign to seven at night or, or, or better. But at seven o'clock in the morning, you go out and there'll be a 90 year old lady there waiting for you to get a, to get a, a picture. Hey everybody. If you really like our show, go to our merchandise store, buy some shirts. We're going to be adding more things. We're going to be making it exciting and everything else. Check out the old episodes. Like I said, we got a lot of great interviews and we really enjoy the fact that you join us each and every week for our show. Thank you. Um, obviously, you know, your show got circulated, not just in the U S it went all over the world. And so yeah. did you get chances to go overseas and meet some of those fans? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it actually, you know, you, you're in the States so long people, people that you've seen there, you know, they're, don't, they're not that excited because they've seen you before, but you go, like I was in Germany. I couldn't believe it. It's like, I couldn't walk. I couldn't, really? I, I did uh, Harley days. It's a huge event. And I did that ride with them and it was, that ride was probably three miles long. But the people, the people, listen, there's not a country that I go to that people, every every country I go to, people know me. And they come up to me. They want to take pictures. They want autographs. Anywhere I go in the world, anywhere in the world. It's crazy. That is that is crazy. So Germany, I think they just had Harley, the Harley days Harley a couple days. weeks ago. Yeah, I think that was a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty That's big. an annual thing. Yeah, it's a real big thing. How about like up in Scandinavia? Because there, you know, there's some rabid riders up there. I don't know if I've been up that way. Okay. I don't know if I've been up that way. I've been in China, Japan, uh, Philippines. I mean, um, I could just go on and on and on. Um, so, so tell me, so tell me about people. China. How, how are the people there? They were they they were you know they're a little bit more respectful there but, sure. but there was a, there was a lot of fans there were a lot of fans there you know so you know they did come up to you and get you know pictures and and uh, autographs but um, it, it was a pretty unique experience. So how's how's the government with somebody like you coming in that is such an iconic pop figure to these people and being there? Did did they have a guarded attitude towards you? Are they? guarded towards the people with you in any way, shape or form, or they just let it kind of happen naturally? Well, we did uh, bikes for presidents, president of Brazil, Malaysia. So most of those, most of those countries, um, most of those countries, we always had uh, like bodyguards and people okay. always, uh, always uh, around us. But um, yeah, it was it, 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 it's it's pretty cool. You're building a bike for the president of a country. Absolutely, <laughs> a fan. It's like almost funny when you think about it, right? Yeah, it is. I I think that's I think that's got to be like a heck of an honor, but it's probably a lot a lot of stress that comes with doing that kind of a build too. Yeah, you know, it's. I'll tell you. Uh, I know you guys sometimes get some really odd requests, and I'm not going to go into who it was, but. 
I was at their shop and and they take me over to this bike and it's got a mount for an AK-47 between the handlebars and it's got all this stuff. And it had uh, writing on it that I couldn't read. It was Middle Eastern writing. And I said, I looked at it real funny and they go, it's not what you think. And they explained the situation of who it was going to. And they said, but we're, we're afraid we got to ship it overseas. And we're afraid the way this thing looks, you know, if this anything's going to happen. I said, well, let's get some vinyl graphics because we had a vinyl graphics shop and which we still do. And they're like, we'll just wrap over that stuff. When it gets there, you pull it off and then they get to see the paint. Nobody will be the wiser. Right. But yeah, just crazy requests. But the guy wanted an AK 47 to be able to mount between the handlebars so he could cruise around his country in the middle east on this thing so any crazy things like that uh requests that stand out in your mind that you when somebody made that request for a build you know that maybe you scratched your head and had to put some thought and serious uh, labor in to make it happen dude you, you, like there are so so many of them um you know a lot of them were just the fantasy it was like an impossible to do but we tried to get I mean, we did we did theme bikes, you know. We did bikes for corporations, which was a niche, you know. And um, yep. a lot of people frowned on it. It's like that's not really a bike, you know. It's uh, you're a cake decorator. <laughs> you're just putting, uh, just slapping stuff on the on the bike. But um, you know, there was a lot of uh, you know, it was a different bike. You know, not everybody was building a bike that looked like a jet or or uh, you know fire engine or, or whatnot but um there was a there was a lot involved in those bikes a lot of fabrication a lot of ingenuity um yeah there was a lot there there was a lot involved in those bikes well i think it's really easy for somebody on the outside to take a look at the work you do and and criticize it but the thing is always orange county choppers you you know the rest of your team always been a, was able to find symmetry with everything I mean, there's some people, yeah, you can theme a bike, but it's going to look like a hot mess. You still had function and form, all right? And if you got function and form, what is custom bike building? Function and form, right? Well, some people are just, I'm a chopper guy. Even back, even when we started that show, you know, I had a 16-inch tire, I had 24 over front end you know, uh, uh, a pan head, shovel head, whatever it was. I, I, I started with those bikes in the sixties and I never left them. I still ride, uh, um, 24 over, uh, girders. I, I you know, I, I still ride those bikes, but those were the bikes that, that we were building. And those were the bikes that brought the money in and they brought, you know, uh, the, the corporations, you know, we were in four Super Bowls, So the, it worked for us. And, you know, it, it's like anything else, like you say, you know, <clears throat> you build a, a bike for Caterpillar, you're not going to build uh, another bike for Lincoln unless that bike is something that's a Caterpillar. Right. Because Lincoln don't want a Lincoln unless it's a Lincoln. Exactly. So, so there was a lot, there was a lot of uh, designing uh, to build those bikes. That's exactly it. That's why I'm saying, you know, that having functionality, form and design and being able to blend all that together to, you know, give you something special. And I mean, and I never I never looked at any of your bikes and thought, look, they looked like a hot mess. That something was just thrown together trying to appease a customer. You know, you guys put a lot of thought. You put a lot of effort in all your bikes. And that's, uh, you know, that's I think that sometimes got lost like you said you know people liked you know the family fun, you know, the family dynamic of it because they saw what they might be you know dealing with in their own families or some of the stuff that's going on so it was raw and real to them but at the end of the day these people wanted to see you know a bike built at the end of the day but you know it's interesting most of our audience were not bike people they were families but they but to to, to them that was a piece of art that's the way they uh, they looked at it. So it's interesting even today, it's families that come, it's families that come to events, it's families that watch that show. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and they see, they see a little piece of themselves, you know, in all of you guys and what you're doing. I mean, I, 
I've seen family businesses and I've seen the same sort of dynamics that exist that can exist with your own. I mean, you're not, you're not outliers. We're all like that. We're all human. We're all, you know, what we are. And I think that's the reason, you know, it's, you know, you just, we go back to when you were first talking about that. That's the reason, you know, a lot of people were just, you know, amazed by um, what they saw because they saw their own families there. So, um, now, so you have four kids and how many grandchildren now? Cause you got a few grandkids seven. now. Seven, seven, uh, seven grandchildren. The oldest one is 22. 22. Yeah. And what's, and what's the youngest? The youngest is, uh, 11. They're 11. twins. Oh, twins. All yeah. right. Yeah. My son, Dan had twins. I got twins that are going to about Ooh. to be three. So that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. Now it's a boy and a girl too. So, uh, and my daughter, she's she's looking to have more, and I'm like, well, you, you're done. You got one of each, you know. But she's there. Uh, you go. She always wanted to be a mama, so she's looking forward to being a mama again. So that's great. That's exciting. So now, um, what do you see for the future with you know with what you're wanting to do? I know you're still getting out there. You're still meeting a lot of people. Um, it's still got a lot of uh, great involvement in the community. But uh, you know, what would you like to see happen? when you say see up as far as myself yes yeah i you know it, it, it's it's like you know my my life is bikes you know and, and that's you know that's what i enjoy doing you know we have a restaurant here and you know there there's other things that I, I'm, I'm i'm a pretty simple person you know there's not many things you know i like to fish i like to work out i like to build bikes you know it's it, it's not a, a big realm of things uh, that I that, that that I that I have a, a passion for, uh, so I think that you know, like right now, I'm in a, in a small shop. Uh, I'm back to building bikes, you know, pretty much myself. Uh, I have one other per person, uh, so I'm back to back to the garage thing, and, and and I'm enjoying it more than anything. You know, I don't. We don't really. Uh, we're in the back. We're 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 right next to Burt's Barracuda Harley Davidson. And we're in the back, so nobody knows where we are, and uh, and it's it, 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 it's great, you know. You get up in the morning. I don't have those time like you. You know, you, you got to be done by. You got to be done by. You only got five weeks. I don't have that pressure. That was a lot of pressure. People people think that was not true, but it was so true. And it was every show, right. every show. If you think about it, think about this for a second. If you see the bikes that we built, and some of them were like rocket ships, we had five weeks to build those bikes. That's it. Whatever bike we built, you had five weeks. Who does that? No, they don't. And I mean, and it's, you guys had to be crazy timelines. And, you know, I talked to other guys that are, are building bikes uh, for shows or have, be it a Billy Lane or the Counts guys or, you know, um, Jesse and stuff like that, you know, it's 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 nuts you guys are up against it and they come in and they give you a timeline and you're having to not just put something that's not going to kill somebody but something that looks good and people want to see i mean that's that's not easy yeah you got to take care of your customer you know you, you can't uh you know if the customer's having a um an affair uh wedding or whatever it is and they're they're expecting that bike on that date you better show up right <laughs> it's a bike Right. And I mean, and the thing is, the custom building, I mean, there's always something that goes wrong. There's oh. always something, you know, and I and I think that's one thing that was good because you watch some of the other shows. They don't show the pitfalls. They don't show the things that you run into. They don't show the difficulty it is to do a custom bike. Your show always showed us that. OK, you showed us that, you know, this is not easy. You know, if it was easy, everybody would build custom bikes. But there's only a few people like yourself out there that build a great bike, build a quality bike and uh, and, and do it with all the, you know, with all the issues and, and filming and everything else. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, we had a good crew. We had yes. a, good, a good group of people and that made all the difference in the world. You know, we had the equipment um, and that, that made a big difference. Um, but I think you're only as good as the people that are around you. And we had some, some real good talent. Uh, Rick Petko was one of the best guys that we had, that we had. Yeah. And, and, and that's great to hear you say that because, uh, that's, that's very, very true. But Paul, 
don't be too modest. It starts at the top, you know, and, and uh, it, you facilitated all that. You facilitated bringing that talent together and, and making this happen. So, so I want to touch on something else. Uh, I, I, I'm a dog fan, and I see you, you like bull mastiffs. Yeah. So, uh, love <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I've read and stuff. So, um, how long have you had bull mastiffs now? Oh man. Um, I don't know if you remember the beginning of the show. I had Gus. Yes. In most of the shows. So starting around that time, I, I've had masters. Uh, I've had four at a time. Uh, I just lost, uh, three, um, Sorry to hear that. It's the worst part, you know. Yes, it is. But um, you know, we 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 have a lot of dogs. We have Chihuahuas. We have, you know, uh, my wife's been the head of the SPCA for thirty years now. Oh, and, uh, outstanding. Non, non kill shelter. So we don't we we rescue all animals. We don't, you know, whether it's a dog or. <laughs> right now, uh, our place in Florida, we're in uh, Brooksville, Florida. And believe it or not, it's a country. When I tell you country, it's all farms. Yeah. And we have, we have cows, horses, pigs. Outstanding. And, uh, and they're all rescue animals, you know. I love it. I love it. Good for you. I I I I, I absolutely love that. So, um, Paul, this is uh this has been a great you know great talking to you. I mean, I I hope you know maybe we come back around again and. Sure. and get together or maybe if uh, you're at Daytona or Sturgis or something, you know, get you on, talk, you know, some more with you and stuff like that. But we end each show with, with three questions um, that we throw, we pose to everybody. So they're simple questions, um, but we always get a, a wide variety of answers. So we're going to ask you three questions. You ready for them? Not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, they're easy. So um, if you could, if you could own any bike, um, that you've not owned or anything that you want, you know, what, what, what bike would that be? Boy, I have all those bikes. <laughs> I'm not surprised by that. Uh, I, you know, I, I like, um, I, I you know, I, I like the, the FLs like, um, 66. Sure. Probably my, my, uh, my favorite year. I would like to have a nice '66. Yeah, that's those are beautiful bikes. They dress out so you know so nice, and they, they were built for chrome, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And you know, back in the day, it was like people would take throw away three quarters of the stuff on that bike and just you know either make it a, 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 a sort of like a chopper, you know, take get rid of the cow on it, get rid of the yep. headlight, you know what I mean? And then today, you know, like I reached the point and I said. You know, I really, uh, I, I bought a 97 Road King. It was the first bike that I ever bought that um, it was like a road bike, you know. And But before that, I started uh, seeing them, and I just started liking them more and more. And then, you know, finally uh, I got one. So I've had I've had quite a few. I, I have a nice 77 uh, FLH um, at my house, which is a really cool bike. But, yeah, probably a 66. Okay. Yeah, that's a great choice. I love it. And you're right. Everybody's buying those, and if they found them stripped down, now they're trying. They're chasing parts, trying to put it back original, or make it look like the you know the way it rolled out. So, if you could go ride with anybody, past or present, that you have not, who who would you like to go ride with? Um, what's his name? When you say past, could be passed away. Sure. Dennis Hopper. Apps, uh, good, good pick. I thought it might be Brando, so I wasn't sure. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Dennis Hopper is a great. That's a great pick. So that would yeah. that would be a hell of a guy to go ride with. And then I know you've ridden all over the world, but uh, is there any one place in the world that you have not ridden that you'd like to go ride one day? I guess the Alps, Switzerland. I yeah, understand I, the riding there is incredible. The I had family in Holland. I was stationed in Italy, and I used to ride up. And let me tell you what that ride up through Switzerland. Sometimes I take the route up through Austria. Sometimes I go through Switzerland, and uh, the Swiss ride is absolutely amazing. You come out of Milan, and and you you just you just shoot north, and it's just beautiful riding. You go past Interlaken and stuff like that. Fantastic. So I hope you get a chance to do that because that's beautiful yeah. riding. 
Sir, it's been a pleasure. Um, Thank you. You know, we we really appreciate you coming on and talking with me tonight, and you know, and telling a little bit more about yourself. And uh, we wish you the best. And we're all going to be watching, you know, your career, you know, and things that you continue to do. And I hope that if there's any way that we at Knuckle Busters can support your efforts and things that you may have going on. You'll let us know because we're going to step up and do it. And I'm going to go watch the Christmas bike episode because i never saw that so i'm going to go see that that. tonight yeah i'm going to go watch that because that sounds like a lot of fun so um for me and everybody else that's watching thank you very much paul thank you have a great day you too thank you